I always have this ritual of cleaning off the bottom of my feet before I get on my mat, even though I'm just vacuuming the floor. It just feels like I need to do that. Oh, it's Thursday. Happy Thursday. I'm made if you're new to me. I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy to be here. I hope that you know that. I, I like look forward to every single one of my classes, and I'm so glad that you're here and giving me the opportunity to spend some time with you. We're going to start sitting. Let your eyes soften. Just like... Five, ten breaths here, not very long. Block under your hips if you need it. Whatever. Sit comfortably, it doesn't have to be cross-legged. I'm just taking this moment, I like to use this first moment of like just stopping. And in this moment I say, now I begin my practice of yoga. And that doesn't mean that my practice doesn't extend beyond my mat, just it means that in this moment I've decided to commit to being here on my actual mat. to be in my breath, to be in my body, to be an observer of my thoughts, important thing is your breath here. It really is. I will stand by that unequivocally. Your breath is your connection to life. And it has profound impact on your nervous system, on the state of your mind, on the health of your body. So more than anything, more than any posture, more than any movement we're going to do, Allow your breath to be the most important thing that you do for the next hour. And if you're comfortable cultivating ujjayi pranayama, we're going to work a little bit with that today. If you're familiar with it, go right into it. It might be something that you use all the time. It might not be. So you're going to inhale through the nose. Open your mouth like you want to fog up a mirror. You're going to do the same thing, but keep your mouth closed. And so it's like you're fogging up the inside of your mouth. And then on the inhale, and I like to put a little visual here. I actually put a little visual. It's like you're drawing the fog back off the mirror. And so it creates a little gentle sound. and gives the mind a place to rest. If it works for you, fantastic. If it doesn't, just make sure that you are letting the breath be fluid and full and soft and constant. Come onto your hands and your knees. With an inhale, rock forward. With an exhale, rock back. Inhaling. And exhaling. So as you come forward, Feeling the fingertips catch a bit, getting a little stretch in the wrist, but be mindful if that bothers your wrist at all, just make it smaller. As you come backwards, hips toward your heels, catch yourself in your feet a bit. Use the feet connecting down. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, lower to your belly, controlled. Inhale, Shalabhasana, stretch the hands back, flip the feet up. Exhale, release down. Rise up, inhale. Exhale, back. Inhale, forward. Lower down, exhale. Inhale, Shalabhasana. Exhale, release. Inhale, press up. And exhale, back. Again, inhale forward, lower down, inhale lift, exhale release, rise up inhale, exhale back, inhale forward, control it down, exhale, keep your hands down and rooted, inhale cobra, push the tops of the feet down, exhale, soften down, 
Rise up, inhale. And then press back. Two more like that, inhale. Exhale, belly down. Cobra, inhale. Soften, exhale. Rise, inhale. And then take it back. Awesome, one more time. Just building this rhythm of breath. Time, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Inhale forward to plank. Use your knees if you need to. Exhale, halfway chaturanga. Inhale, back up to plank. And downward facing dog. Inhale forward to plank. Chaturanga. Rise. Dog pose. One more time like that, please. Inhale. Inhale, and exhale back. Right leg stretches back. Open up the hip if it feels good. Push into the hands, really imprint the hands down. If it feels good, bend your knee. And then right knee to right tricep. About five breaths here. Next inhale, stretch back. Bring your knee to your tricep again, same side, and then place your right foot outside of your right hand. Good, left knee is gonna come down. You're gonna lean back a little bit into this left shoulder. And just kind of open up. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, yes. Back toes can be tucked, they can be released, whatever feels better in your body. Allow a bit of a back bend to come. Like, let this feel really kind of extravagant in the chest, allowing the shoulders to open. One more breath in, bring this right hand to the inside of the right foot. You're going to turn the left foot over to the right, and then right hand can stay at the ground, you can kind of slide it up. So I'm going to take my fingertips off of the ground, but keep my arm rooted to the inside of my leg. I'm just going to flip around so you can actually see that, and I don't have to just tell you, you can actually see. So sliding my arm up a little bit, but if you need a little higher arm to thigh, is perfect. Pushing the arm and the leg against each other to roll the chest open. Mm -hmm. Yes, beautiful. And then take your left arm and just stretch it toward your left knee. Pull the chest open, turn the palm forward, activate that arm. Yeah. Inhale, rise up, straighten that right leg, tip over into the left hand, lift the right leg up. So to bend the left elbow, kind of give yourself a little bounce here, and then push up, come all the way around, plant your hands, take the left toes back. Step back to plank, inhale, chaturanga or the floor, exhale, curl and rise, up dog, cobra, shalavasana, so good, downward facing dog, exhale, pause, take a couple of breaths here, so I do not think of downward facing dog as a resting pose, I am going to ask you to do the same, but it is a place where I think to collect myself, it's like a home base for me, in this vinyasa practice. Because we come through it quite a bit. It's a way to check in with the breath, check in with the foundation, check in with the thoughts. Left leg back, inhale. Firm both arms, open up the hip if it feels good, or the hips. And then if you'd like, bend the left knee. Breath in. Exhale, left knee to left tricep, about five breaths here. Power up the right leg. Inhale, reach. 
reach back. And then right, uh, left knee, <laughs> left tricep again, and then left foot outside the left hand. Right knee's gonna come down. Toes can stay tucked or you can release the toenails to the ground. And then this nice spacious twist, kind of leaning back into this left shoulder blade. But that doesn't mean that you're dropping into the floor. You're pushing the floor away and using that shoulder blade to get this beautiful little back bend here. For this to feel really sort of luxurious. One more inhale. And then come around with this left hand. Take the right foot, turn it over to the left. You're going to slide this left arm to the inside of the leg. If you want to put it on the top of the arm, um, leg that's fine on top of the thigh, that's totally not just fine, it's great. Push the arm and leg against each other. Good. Stretch the right hand kind of toward the knee and then turn the palm forward. So there's this energy of the arms pulling the chest through. Anything that's in the ground is pressing down, like you're trying to leave a mark there. Good. In case you came in after I introduced myself, I'm Maeve. I'm very happy you're here. If you need anything specific, put it in the chat, but we're already, you know, into class, so you better think about it quick. Good. Requests are hard to come by now. The DJ's begun already. Rise up. And then take it back. So this is a version of Vashistasana, which is not so challenging as an arm balance, right? I mean, it's not like the balance isn't crazy. You get the whole back, or bottom shin rather, to kind of give you foundation. I'm even on my fingertips for, for this. Instead, focus on this length. And feel how the hip has to work to hold that leg up. So it's less about that shoulder and arm strength. Soften the elbow a couple times. And then bring it around. Good. Step it back to plank. Inhale. Your choice. Chaturanga the floor. Cobra. Shalabhasana. Up dog. You can skip this all together and just go straight to down dog from now on if that suits you better. Home base. Take a few breaths. Check in. Inhale. Lift your heels. Exhale, bend your knees. Look where you're going. Where you're going is to the top of your mat. Bring your feet toward your hands. Halfway, inhale. Exhale, fold down. Rise to stand, inhale. Pause here, pause here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Lace the hands. You can leave the index finger and thumb out if you want. And then take a side bend. I don't even care which side. Pick a side. Rise up. Lift. And then second side. Inhale, draw up to center. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway, inhale. Fold back down, exhale. Rise to stand, inhale. Pause. Keep the hands apart. Side bend, pick a side. Come back up. Side bend, second side. Rise up. And bow. Halfway inhale. Exhale and fold. Root to rise. Inhale. Side bend. Exhale. Inhale. Side bend. Inhale. Last time. Exhale. Forward fold. Halfway inhale. Fold down. Exhale. Rise to stand. Inhale. Off to the side, exhale. Inhale. 
and exhale. Inhale, and then fold. Halfway inhale, chaturanga, exhale. Skip it, go to down dog if you don't want to move through this sequence. Pause and dog. Inhale, lift your heels. Exhale, bend your knees, feet to your hands. Halfway, inhale. Fold, exhale. Rise, inhale. Take it right back down again. Exhale, and forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Chaturanga, exhale. Rise. And dog, exhale. Lift your heels, inhale. Bend your knees, exhale. Bring your feet to your hands. Walk, step, or jump. Halfway, inhale. Fold, exhale. Rise, inhale. Take it right back down. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway, inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Inhale and rise. Down dog, exhale. Right leg stretches back, inhale. Right knee, left tricep, exhale. Pause, take a couple breaths here. See if you can make contact. Knee to elbow, maybe up to tricep. Inhale, up and back. Right knee, right elbow or tricep. Couple breaths. Inhale back. Exhale down the center. Place your right foot between your hands. Help it forward if you need to. Crescent pose, rising up. Pull your feet toward each other. So push your right foot down. Energetically drag it to the back of the mat. Push your back foot down. Energetically drag it to the front of the mat. Left arm forward, right arm back. Keep pulling the feet toward each other. Mm -hmm. So good. Reaching forward, reaching forward. Start to straighten the back leg. Left hand down, right hand up. So a little more control than that first uh, twist we did, which I, control isn't the right word. That's not there. A little less sort of grand. A little more straight up and down from the arms. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Sweep this right arm around. Bring the right arm to the inside of that right leg. Root the back heel. Push that right arm into the right leg. Leg into arm. And then take the left arm so it kind of matches that back leg. Good. Push into the front leg, skandasana. Sink to the back of the mat. Bend the right knee a little bit. Dig the right heel down and try to pull the right heel toward the left heel. And then start to re-straighten the leg from there, keeping that sense of activation in the back of the leg. Hands don't have to be at heart. They can be wherever you want. One more inhale. Come around to the top of the mat. Left hand. Left foot, Vashisthasana. If it's there for you, you're going to lift the top leg. Mm -hmm. Good. Release through center, Vinyasa or downward facing dog. So when I say Vinyasa, I'm just meaning Chaturanga Vinyasa. This whole practice is Vinyasa. Vinyasa means breath and movement linked and place the body with purpose. Left leg back in hand. Cross over to the right. Couple breaths here. See if you can make some contact. And then back with an inhale. To the left, exhale. 
build, pause, breathe, inhale, up and back. When you take that leg back, control it, and then down the center. Place your foot, draw the feet toward each other to rise up into crescent pose. Use your right glutes. Energetically, feet draw toward each other. Hug the left hip in and under a little bit. Mm -hmm. One more inhale here. Exhale, right arm forward, left arm back. Take a pause. And then start to reach forward. That back leg will start to straighten. And then right hand comes down, left hand to the sky. hands away from the shoulders. So right arm is just going to kind of mirror that right side. And left arm is pushing into the left leg. Yeah. And so my fingers on this left hand are not on the ground. They're just pressing. Back of the hand, back of the arm. Rise. Skandasana, back of your mat. Bend the left knee a little bit. Kind of build some energy in the back of this leg, the calf, the hamstring, driving that left heel into your mat. Kind of like, not driving, but imprinting. Just a little drive, a little bit of drive. So that we get the sense that we're pulling with that left leg a little bit. And we're gonna pull ourselves around, right hand, right foot or knee, Vashitasana. One more inhale. Come through center, chaturanga or not. Back to down bow. Right leg back, inhale. Right knee, left side, extend the leg out. Left heel down, fall in triangle. Bring the hand around, sweep your right leg up and back with control. Right knee, right elbow, tricep, shoulder, whatever you got. Inhale, back. Exhale, place your foot forward. Crescent, inhale. Exhale, split the arms. Inhale, reach forward. Power it up. It being the back leg, it being the arms. Right hand to the inside of the leg. Root the heel. Open into this version of side angle. And then lift, skandasana, back of the mat. Pull from that right leg. Vashisdasana. And then optional chaturanga or down dog. Left leg back in half. Cross to the right. Fall in triangle. Extend the leg. Opening up. Yes. So good. And bring the hand down. Sweep the left leg up and back with control. Left knee, left tricep, exhale. Inhale back, control. Place your foot forward. Crescent, rise. Split the arms, right forward, left back. Reach forward, inhale. And then twist. Left arm to the inside of that left leg. Right heel roots. Opening up. Yes. Push. Push. Connect. Connect. Yes. Skandasana. So good. Use that connection to pull yourself back around. 
Vashistasana. Chaturanga. Right leg back, inhale. Right knee, left tricep, extend the leg. Maybe float the leg, take it with your left hand. If it feels okay, maybe start to kick the leg forward. Come back through, right leg to the sky. Right knee, right elbow. Inhale back. Exhale, place your foot forward. Crescent. Powerful rise up. Exhale, twist to the right. Yeah, inhale, reach forward. This time, maybe taking a twist here, maybe hand down. And then right hand to the inside. Left hand, uh, heel roots, left hand reaches. And then skandasana. Come back around, vashistasana, any version, maybe take the foot. And chaturanga, exhale. Rise, inhale. Downward facing dog. Take a breath here, pause. So we're flowing, still controlling. Left leg back, inhale. Cross over to the right. Extend the leg, maybe take it with the right hand. Possibly take it overhead. Come back. And then tap the left arm. All the breath out. Inhale back. And step your foot forward. Control, rise, crescent pose. Little restraint. Exhale, open. Reach forward. Maybe a deeper twist, maybe not. Left hand to the inside of that left leg. Right heel roots. Reach the right hand for the foot. Rise, Skandasana. Beautiful. Come back around. Vashistasana, any version. Chaturanga. <laughs> Exhale. Move through. And dog pose. Now lift your heels. Exhale, bend your knees deeply. Look where you're going, feet to your hands. Halfway, inhale. Fold, exhale. Chair, Utkatasana. Nice and easy. Left knee rises up, hands come into your heart. Warrior three. Push that left leg back. So you're welcome to explore here. If you want a little more support, and it doesn't make the pose easier, but you can take your hands to the floor or to blocks, and it gives you a little bit more feedback on where you are in space. And it gives you a little more support, but it's not easier necessarily, it just is different. If you want, maybe the arms stretch back. Maybe out to the side or overhead. So there's lots of ways to be here. And then standing splits. And there's a lot of ways to be here as well. Maybe, like I'm doing, maybe holding the standing leg with both hands. Maybe keep the hands really far forward and get lots of space here. If there's anything that you take from my class, I'm hoping that it's the freedom to play within the poses and that I am not dogmatic about anything. Have fun. Let it feel good. Let it be challenging. But let it really be an exercise in self-exploration. Come back to chair. Nice and easy. And then rise up, right leg comes up. 
hands into heart just to start, and then push through warrior three. And then we have the same options here. So maybe blocks, really working kind of the, the sort of form of the pose, the sense of extending the legs, of extending the spine, and having that feedback to lengthen your spine. Maybe hands go back behind you, overhead. They might stay at your heart the whole time. Mm -hmm. Standing splits. Also, it's nice to do the pose the same on both sides, but it's not mandatory. We're not the same on both sides. You might need something different on the second side, so don't be so rigid that you feel like I have to do it exactly the same on the second side. Not so. Not so, my friend. Let the pose be alive, ever-changing, come back into chair, come into a toe stand, lift the heels up a little higher than you think you can, lift the heart a little higher, and then sink just about halfway down, if that's okay, on various parts of your body. Keep the heels up, bring your hands to the ground. Take the hands a little forward, so they don't need to be back by the, the feet. Take the hands a little forward, lean forward. We're not coming into crow pose, I just want to clarify that before you go into crow pose. Yes, I can see you, I can't see your name, but you're perfect, whoever you are. Your knees are coming right between your arms like this. And you're going to just lean forward and then come back. And lean forward and come back. And you're going to try to stay in that toe stand when you land. Yes. Julia, it was you that I was saying was perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Keep going like that. A few more. Yes, Joshua, beautiful. Awesome, Jordan. These are so good. Good. Now next time the hands come forward, step it back to plank or jump it right to chaturanga. From it, move through vinyasa or not, meeting in downward facing dog. Right leg stretches back. You have a couple options coming your way. If you want to watch, actually, you can come down on your knees first. Sorry, I always take you into something that might require watching when you're facing the wrong way, right? So. Either just step your right foot forward or you'll lift your left heel, you kind of pick it up, and then your right foot comes down and we're going to come into warrior three. So no matter what, right foot comes to the top of the mat, but if you want to play with those little handstand transitions, right leg kicks up, right foot comes down, we're back into warrior three. And then you're going to bend your standing leg in warrior three. And then re-straight and bend. Inhale and straight. Exhale, bend it. Inhale. Good, now bend the knee. Bring your hands, thumbs to your heart, pinky fingers and the pinky side of the hand to that right knee and thigh if you can. And then start to tip over. So it's a kind of like a cross between a stand and split and a little bit of warrior three here. I mean, there's a little bit of both of those in each other anyway. But this standing leg is bent and you're kind of pitched forward. I always think of this as a diving bird. Lift your left leg a little higher. Use your left glutes, use your left hip to extend the leg, to lift it higher. Cha-cha. And then from here, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Push into that right leg, open up. And then bend the right knee, lean forward. 
and then slowly take this left leg back. We're going to arrive in warrior two. Warrior two. Bring the hands behind your back. Don't lace your hands. Just bring them behind your back. Reach the fingers down toward the ground. Draw the chest open. Imagine you have a block between your hands and you don't want to drop the block. Press into that imaginary block. Soften the front ribs. Pull your feet toward each other. Sink as deep as you can in the legs and then lift it like a quarter of an inch up. And do that by pulling the feet toward each other. Inhale, straighten the front leg, reach the arms out, and then triangle. Oh, we've got a bunch of options coming your way. First of which is just classical hand, shin, or block, maybe on the floor, stacking the hands. If you'd like, maybe, and I like to bend my knee first just because I have hyperextended knees, maybe lift the toes of the right leg, reach down, take the big toe, and then open from here. And the toes can stay lifted or back down. Just like the Ashtanga triangle. One more breath in. Come around with the left hand. If you have the big toe, consider keeping it. Pivot all the way to the left side. We're going to bring the leg up and then maybe, 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 maybe just release and come into wild in here. And just open. Moving into down dog, however you want to get there. And then left leg stretches back. So you have a second opportunity to kind of hop up here. You can do it a couple times if you want. We're going to bring the left foot to the top of the mat. And then into warrior three. And so I'll give you a couple breaths to get there. Yes. Good, and then we'll meet in warrior three. Beautiful, all right. So we got this little bending action happening. Inhale, and then exhale, bend the knee. Inhale, exhale, bend the knee. you bend, we're going to stay in it. We're going to tip forward. So start to take the torso forward. See so if you can get the pinky side of your hands into the thigh of the left leg, into the knee with the pinky fingers maybe, and then the thumbs at the heart. Lengthen the spine and then use the right glutes, the hip muscles, to extend that right leg back and up. And from here, push to open up. Half moon. Ooh. Yeah. Beautiful. So without being too heady about this pose, just be bigger. Be longer in your limbs. Arms, legs, spine lengthens. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Start to bend the standing leg. Tip forward. Let that be your counterbalance. To the right and warrior two. Yes. Beautiful. This time arms coming. 
them in front. They don't touch, just bring them in front. Draw the elbows and the hands toward each other without touching, and then lift the hands up. Lift the elbows. Sink to your deepest warrior two in the legs. Pull the feet toward each other and just feel that quarter of an inch lift. So you're going to explore this pose however you want. The option I gave you on the first side is to lift the toes, maybe find the big toe. And so if you've taken the option of taking the big toe, you're gently pulling away from it. So it's like this toe lock gives you the ability to lift more. And if you don't have the toe, you still get that sense of lifting. You're lifting away from the ground. Gravity's pulling you down, you're drawing up. You're lengthening the spine. One more breath in. And then come around, right hand, right foot or knee. And then consider, just bringing this leg up. I'm going to take this into wild thing. So you're just passing through Vashistasana, unless of course you want to stay there. You're welcome to stay there. Chaturanga or downward facing dog or belly and cobra. Lots of options, lots of ways to get back to down dog. Right leg back, inhale. Lift the left heel, bend the knee. You're going to either just step the right foot forward, you're going to hop up, and right foot down. Good. Lift the heart, pass through warrior three, rise up to stand. Pull this left knee up. Take the left knee with your left hand, maybe the big toe. Right arm out to the side. I've done this shape a couple times. Life does not have to be straight. You can take the foot and it doesn't have to be straight. Take it out to the left. Bring your left foot to your inner right leg. Anywhere on the leg. Ankle, calf, knee, inner thigh. They're all good. Reach up. We've been put, like, fearful, fright that if we put our foot on our knee, we're going to, like, dislocate our knee. It's not going to happen. If it hurts, don't do it, but you're good if it's good. So you find where it feels right. forward, push the left leg through, push the left leg through, bring your left hand around to the ground, good, open up, and then release it down, standing splits here, option to bend the left leg, find it with your other uh, foot with your right hand, and then just kick away, so you don't even have to twist here, just taking a standing split here, with the option of taking that foot. Stay in standing splits, or if you want to play for a moment in handstand, bring your hands down to the ground, both of them, and then just hop up a few times. Or maybe you just find balance. And then when you're ready, vinyasa or dog pose. Left leg stretches back. Lift high into your right toes. Either step the left foot forward or hop the left foot forward. Pass through warrior three. 
and then rise up to stand. Right hand, right knee, or take the foot. You don't have to straighten your leg. You can take the foot and not straighten the leg, but maybe you start to push it away. Work the standing leg, and then open up. And then bend the knee. And bring the foot to the inner leg. Anywhere on that leg. Bring the knee forward. Push the leg through. Right hand down, get a little twist, and then let it go. Standing splits, option to bend this right leg and find your foot. And then just kick it away. And then you'll stay here, or if you want, release your hands down, and just take some lifts. When you're ready, you'll move back to down dog with or without chaturanga in the lineup. Good, Margaret. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Knees come down. Good. Turn to your right. Take your right hand to your right hip. Open up. And come back around. Left hand. Open up. Beautiful. Come back to that very first twist we did. It was kind of like I said, let it be luxurious. Let the shoulder blade kind of support you. Same thing here. Let it be really spacious. And as it feels good, if you want, this might start to translate a little bigger. Take your time with it. Inhaling up. Exhaling. Catching. Inhale. And exhale. Center, reach the arms out in front. Good. Shorten belly button to pubic bone. Shorten sternum to belly button. So almost like you're doing a little tiny crunch here, just like the littlest amount of a crunch. Reach the arms forward. Keep that. Push into your feet. Start to lean back. Engage your glutes. Start to lean back. Engage your glutes. Pull the belly in. Good. So you'll find where is the appropriate amount back. You'll find it. Breathe. Rise, inhale. Back in. Stay here or bring your hands to your heels, maybe to blocks, and then open into camel. It fits there for you. Using the hips. You've got to use your hips. I promise you, you'll be more supported. It'll take it out of your back if you have your glutes supporting you. Good, you're gonna come back out the same way you came in. So release out, come up, and then child's pose, beautifully done. Take a few breaths there. Yeah. And then just see what you need, see what you need. If you want to stay there for about five more breaths, stay there. If you want to come up and take one more Ustrasana, come on up. Maybe the hands just stay at the heart. So I actually really like this version of camel, which might seem like it's an easier version, but for me it's not an easier version because I have a pretty good mobility, kind of in my younger days, hypermobile in my spine, and it really forces me to use the musculature. So don't think that this is like a cop-out to not use your hands, or get your hands to your heels. Who cares if your hands get to your heels? Inhale, rise up. And then come to seated. Really nice work. Beautiful. So cross-legged 
here if this feels good. Stacking the shins if this feels good. Pigeon pose, uh, thread the needle, whatever feels good to you. You're going to take your hands to your feet. You're going to push your hands into the balls of your feet. And you're going to push back into your hands. Just a little isometric here. Lengthen out the spine. And then gently release. Watch your breath, watch it enter, watch it exit, start to notice a little pause in between. We're slowing down here, so maybe the pause between the breath slows down a bit. few breaths here. And your inhale draws you up if you're forward. And then let's switch. Cross, stack, whatever it is you're doing, switch sides, unless it's something that's not one-sided, you can stay longer. If you're coming with me in either Sukhasana or in this fire log pose, you're going to push the Feet into the hands, the hands into the feet. You're not going crazy here, it's just like an equal opposite. Good, take a breath in, yeah, and then soften, release that pressure. You come forward, slowly drawing back up. Bring the soles of your feet together. Mm -hmm. And gather your knees with your arms like so. So gather up. Yep, perfect turn. Good. And then press your knees out into your arms gently. Beautiful. Lift the spine a little higher. So you can Get the connection of the sitting bones down a little more. Keep pushing out, keep pulling up. Equal opposite. Good. Really nice. Beautiful. And then just release gently. And let the knees come open to wherever they want. Take the feet if it feels good. Come forward if it feels good. Or stay right where you are. Rise up if you're forward. And then find where you want to finish your practice. So if you want to stay seated, come to seated. If you want to lie down for Shavasana, lie down. And you can sit any way that's comfortable. If you want to sit for meditation, you can use props if you want. I'm going to stay seated, but don't let my action affect yours. You choose what you need. And if you have the time to stay in a longer Shavasana or a longer meditation and you want to just shut me down now, I'm not offended, take that time. Allow the eyes to soften. If you were utilizing Ujjayi Pranayama during the flow portion, now you can just let that go. The breath becomes quiet and softer and easy, easy, easy. You don't need to control the breath at all.
Feel whatever's connecting you to the ground. Allow it to be heavier. Allow the ground to hold you up. And if your brain is still feeling like it's jumping around a bit, it's totally fine. You can just watch it as an observer like you're watching a movie. You don't need to attach to the thoughts. to deepen. If you're lying down, start to make your way back to seated, gradually, gently. And then once we're all seated together, bring your hands into your heart. I used to say that yoga made me a better person, and I was wrong. Yoga made me realize that I was already a great person, that it was all inside of me, that my compassion, my kindness, my ability to slow down and let people in in traffic was already there. I just hadn't tapped into it, right? So this practice is the art of observation of ourselves. And in that art of observation, we see how whole and wonderful and perfect we are as we are. And in honoring that, we honor that we are all one. We are all one. Extending that outward. Bow your mind to your heart. Rise, let your eyes open gently. Thank you for your practice. If you have any questions, if you need anything, let me know. I'll see you next week.